Today, I just have a quick video for you guys. Um, first off, I have a couple of announcements, uh, the first of which is that I was recently interviewed over on Photography TV. It's another YouTube channel here. Go check that out if you're interested. I think we talked for like 40 minutes about my story and photography and a bunch of stuff. Um, also, I'm going to be teaching out the at the Out of Acadia workshop. That's going to be at Acadia National Park in Maine. This is going to be in October. And teaching with me are gonna be people like Thomas Heaton, maybe you've heard of that guy. Um, Thomas Heaton, Aaron Bobnick, uh, Brian Peterson, Juan Pons, a whole bunch of really big names, as well as local really excellent photographers from that area. Very excited to do that. Um, they gave me an offer code. So if you guys want to go su get signed up for that, it's going to be like a three day photography conference that is only for landscape photography, only for landscape and nature photography. And we're going to be going out and shooting in beautiful Acadia during fall color. Really looking forward to it. If you use the promo code Nick, it's hard to remember. If you use the promo code Nick, um, they're going to give you I don't exactly remember how much. I think it's 15, maybe 20% off. Anyways, um, go check that out. You can find that out out of Acadia.com or out of Chicago.com. So really looking forward to that. Okay, so my kind of little rant slash tips that I wanted to give in this episode are uh, something that actually came up in one of my Instagram comments. It was a guy basically saying that he's noticed that a lot of my photos have almost an animated feel to them, uh, meaning that there's motion in them. And they kind of got me thinking that I'm really drawn to photos, landscape photos that have a sense of motion to it. It kind of got me thinking about, well, you know, um, what is it that creates that? And basically I kind of boiled it down to a few things. Photographing moving water is one of my favorite things to ever. It's just so much fun. Every photo that you take is just a little bit different. And when you're photographing moving water, your shutter speed matters a lot. Depending on the kind of look that you're going for, uh, sometimes you want to use kind of a slow shutter speed and convey this very tranquil, um, very peaceful kind of look. Uh, but for me, a lot of times I'm trying to capture the energy and the motion of the, of the location, especially if I'm somewhere that I'm putting myself in danger. I don't want to make it look, you know, peaceful and calming because it wasn't. I want to kind of convey that energy that's happening. So in order to do that, a lot of times you're trying to get a shutter speed that is allowing the water to blur a little bit but not so much that you're losing all that nice detail that's happening in the water. And it has to do with like how close you are to the water, um, how fast the water is moving. Typically, uh, kind of a rule of thumb, one fifth of a second is a good place to start. If the water is a little further away from you, you can get away with longer shutter speeds than that. Uh, just because the water needs to move a little farther before it gets that same kind of texture. Um, but there are those times when you really want to just freeze the action. You know, you're looking for a very fast shutter speed to show the shape of the water. You know, sometimes you get a waterfall that is coming down in curtains and those curtains of water can be a lot more interesting and entertaining than do using a really long shutter speed and just turning it to marshmallow or, you know, turning it to silk. Um, it's a lot of times it doesn't convey the power of a big waterfall to use those slow shutter speeds. And uh, for that reason, I, I like using a faster shutter speed. Same is true when you get really big splashes of surf, you know, when waves are crashing against the shoreline or the rocks and shooting up into the air, you want to capture the shape of that wave. The same is true for, you know, when you're photographing kind of abstract shots of waves, kind of like uh, one of my uh, in the in the field videos, uh, chasing waves. I, I did a lot of that and I wanted to keep my shutter speed fast for those so I could really uh, preserve the shape of the waves. So anytime that I'm doing that, I'm striving for if I can get to a thousandth of a second, um, you're going to be in great shape. One thousandth of a second will freeze the action enough 
um, unless it's moving really, really fast, it's going to preserve all of that shape and all of those fine details. A lot of times it's very difficult to get to that one thousandth of a second. A lot of times you have to increase your ISO and kind of open up your aperture and, and sacrifice a little bit of depth of field. But usually I'm striving for that one thousandth of a second. There's lots of landscapes that just don't have a lot of motion and uh, motion can kind of be created by, you know, people always throw out the term leading lines. And the reason leading lines uh, work so well in landscape photography is because it's a path and that path creates eye motion. Your eye physically moves through the photo and you can almost envision yourself moving through the photo, envision yourself walking down the road that's in the photo or walking down the path or or whatever. Um, it just kind of gives a sense of motion. And then sometimes you will have moving objects in your landscape photos, uh, like windmills, for example. And uh, it's one thing to freeze the action of a windmill, but it just looks like the the turbines are not turning. So just by slowing down a shutter speed, throwing on an ND filter and, and introducing some motion into that, it gives the photo a completely different feeling and a sense of energy. So anyways, I just wanted to quickly throw that out. Really think about shutter speeds you're using. And when you're photographing water, don't go so slow with your shutter speed that you're losing all those fine details. A lot of times the fine detail in water is my favorite part. Like if you can uh, have a fast enough shutter speed to where you're preserving some of that detail, but still injecting motion and um, movement into that water, it's going to give a feeling of movement, but you're going to maintain your texture and detail. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully this has helped and we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to try my hardest to uh, get out and record a video this weekend. So um, be looking for one next week. Sorry, it's been a little bit slow coming uh, the last few weeks. But anyways, we'll see you guys later. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.